This video is part two of how closed loop spinal cord stimulation works. In part one of this series, we looked at how the electrical field generated around the spinal cord stimulation lead will activate dorsal column fibers and generate an evoked compound action potential, or ECAP. We also reviewed how the ECAP can be used to define a therapeutic window for individual patients. In this video, we will explain how ECAP controlled closed loop spinal cord stimulation system works to maintain therapy within this therapeutic window and how this differs from other spinal cord stimulation systems. A fundamental problem with spinal cord stimulation therapy is that the epidural space in which the spinal cord stimulation leads are placed is not a static environment. Movements of the body and other normal physiological functions, such as the heart beating or the lungs expanding and contracting while we breathe, all change the distance from the spinal cord to the spinal cord stimulation lead, located above it in the epidural space. Stimulus pulses have a so-called activating region, which is the region within which the stim pulse is able to elicit an action potential in a fiber. Fibers outside that activating region will not be activated by the stim pulse. Therefore, distance between the spinal cord and lead is the main factor affecting fiber activation and spinal cord stimulation. When the cord moves closer or further away from the stimulating electrodes, the dorsal column fibers will move in and out of the activating region, so a fixed stimulation amplitude can at one time activate a large number of fibers and at another time elicit no response at all. Spinal cord stimulation systems with a constant stimulation amplitude are referred to as a fixed output open loop systems. In this fixed output spinal cord stimulation example, we see that with a patient seated, the 6 milliamp pulse is generating the desired ECAP amplitude of 50 microvolts. However, the next moment, with the patient lying down, the 6 milliamp pulse is now recruiting many more fibers, generating an ECAP of 100 microvolts, which is above their therapeutic window. This is because the leads have moved closer to the spinal cord, but the intensity of the stimulus has not changed so more fibers are within the activating region of the stim pulse. In another moment, in this example with the patient standing up, the same 6 milliamp pulse results in no activation at all, leading to no therapeutic benefit. This is due to the lead having moved further away from the cord and the activating region reaching no fibers at all. The Evoke Closed Loop Spinal Cord Stimulation System addresses this problem by using the ECAP amplitude to control the strength of the stimulation amplitude, ensuring the activating region is more consistent. This means a similar number of fibers are activated, and there is less variation in activation over time. This process can be broken down into four main steps. First, the system generates a stimulation pulse. Second, it measures the amplitude of the elicited ECAP. Next, it compares the ECAP amplitude to the desired or target level. Finally, it adjusts the required strength of the next stimulation pulse in order to maintain the ECAP amplitude at the desired level. So in this example, the ECAP amplitude is smaller than the target. Therefore, the amplitude for the next stimulus will be higher. Therefore, with every stimulation pulse, the system measures and adjusts to maintain the desired level of activation, thereby optimizing the therapy for each individual. To put this into context, if the system is operating at 40 Hz, it will make almost 3.5 million amplitude adjustments per day. This also means it is able to adjust much faster than a patient can manually. For example, the typical increase in intensity felt during a cough would be substantially mitigated, something a patient would normally not be able to react to in time. If we compare ECAP controlled closed loop spinal cord stimulation to our earlier example of a fixed output spinal cord stimulation system, we can see how the physiological changes that cause problems with fixed output spinal cord stimulation are mitigated with an ECAP controlled closed loop system. 
Now, in the same situation where 6 milliamp results in a desired 50 microvolts E cap in one moment, as the distance from the lead to the spinal cord is reduced, which would cause the E cap amplitude to start increasing, the system measures this change and adjusts the stimulus output to maintain the same level of activation with the patient lying down. The same is true if the lead moves away from the spinal cord, which in our example occurs when the patient stands, and the stimulus output is instead increased in order to maintain the desired activation with a more consistent activating region. We can illustrate what these changes look like over time with respect to the therapeutic window to contrast the effects of fixed output and closed loop systems. In this example, with a fixed output system, there are occurrences of activation outside the supramaximal range related to posture or physiological processes. There are also instances of the activation falling below the threshold level, likely resulting in no therapeutic benefit at all, meaning the energy from the stimulus is simply wasted. Conversely, with the closed loop spinal cord stimulation, while there is naturally some variation, the stimulus output is adjusted with every pulse, resulting in the patient spending significantly more time in the therapeutic window around the desired level. 